This program shows real direct support professionals serving real people with developmental disabilities in a variety of settings, offering you a chance to learn about the work involved in direct support and judge for yourself if you're interested in pursuing a career in supporting people with developmental disabilities. It's important to know the realities about direct support work prior to employment because it increases chances that you'll select a job that you'll do well and enjoy. Direct support professionals play many roles. They work as companions, advisors, counselors, chauffeurs, cooks, teachers, and assistants, to name a few. Many people find direct support work stimulating, challenging, and fulfilling. Others do not. There's no right or wrong decision. Only what is a good fit for you. Part of a team works in this house with three guys. We have to do almost everything for them, to a degree. But by the same token, too, we're still trying to teach them to do certain things. On my shift, which is third shift, overnight, I work from 10.30 at night until 8.30 in the morning. My duties include general cleanup and preparing the meal for the next night. When I come in at 10.30, I come in, I check on the guys, set up their linen and stuff for the next morning, uh, about 5.30 in the morning. That's when I start waking the guys up, getting them moving. Then I uh, get them showered, clean their rooms, change the linen. By 7 o'clock, uh, my partner comes in and uh, she starts fixing breakfast. I tend to refer to David as uh, my shadow because no matter where I go, I'll, I'll turn around, I'll bump into him. You never know what you're going to come across in the mornings. Come in the mornings. Um, I help get them ready for work, get them dressed, get their hygiene done, shaved, um, teeth brushed, dressed for work. The night staff's already here, and they usually have uh, things prepared for breakfast already. Um, they've usually all already got uh, one or two consumers started. Then we get their breakfast and pass medications. There's two days in the week when one of one of the consumers has laundry that she does, so we get that taken care of. Everybody generally goes and uh, they sit in the living room and wait until it's time to go. We usually either have the news on or, or the radio. Um, there's one that needs total care. She has to have a helmet on and she can't brush her teeth, she can't wash herself. She, she doesn't do anything without assistance. If the consumers are having a bad morning, it can be very distracting trying to drive them to work in the morning. You know, sometimes things get thrown in the van out of their lunch boxes or um, somebody's grabbing somebody. Somebody's screaming obscenities. I get as much paperwork done as I can within that half an hour time I have, check emails, whatnot, um, check over any communications. The first thing I want to do is I check documentation. You know, I want to check to see, you know, who's sick, who's here, who's gone, who has appointments, um, what needs to be done. Usually when I come in, they're getting off from work. They need showers, hygiene done. It's time for them to eat, meal preparation, um, activities. The individuals that I support are pretty much independent. They just may require some minor assistance. They may need prompting. Robert's a pretty unique individual. He's, uh, he's probably been in the system for a long time. He's a very gentle and sweet soul. He's uh, actually pretty independent despite some of the uh, problems with the Alzheimer's. Wanda is a pretty great gal. She's someone who has been, been through the system and she has survived. She's got a wonderful personality. She's a, a person with diabetes, so we have to really maintain her health at all times. She likes to test the waters every once in a while, but that's what everybody does. I work with 15 adults with developmental disabilities. The guys start work at 845. I oversee the production that we do here in the workshop. I oversee what they're working on, how much they're doing. My job is a support staff team member. From 9 to 3, I will be here and I will get her up and ready, give her medicine, just get going. If we want, we'll make it fun and we'll go outside to our nice little garden area and turn on music and eat. First, I was scared. I was scared because I didn't know how to work with people who had disabilities. But 
when you get into the field, you don't see their disabilities. I work with Nathan a couple times a week. We pretty much, in general, end up troubleshooting problems he's having at work, problems he's having with his family, problems he's having in his social life, and anything that comes up in his life that he thinks he needs to talk about. Nathan seems to encounter lots of little things in his life that he blows into big things, and between the two of us, we try to settle them down and try to work through it so that he can solve most of his problems with just some advice. As a guardian, my role is basically to advocate for the clients that I have um, and work closely with the facility that they get services from. I advocate for their activities of daily living, their medical care, and you can't do that unless you have uh, knowledgeable, competent, and compassionate direct support professionals. I work in the day program. Um, what that means is um, just kind of help people with their social skills, their health skills, peer uh, conflict and management skills, um, just kind of really whatever they kind of need help with. Some people are really independent, they just need help maybe with, you know, monitoring they take their medication or helping them eat their, eat their lunch or with their hygiene needs. It just depends on what everybody needs. Basically, just here to help them be as independent as they can. Do you like your new trainer, Kim? Hi, Tan comes on at 3.30 and her job consists of getting the dinner for the girls, give them their showers, give them their meds. She's a good cook. They all sit down as a family to eat. This is a home-cooked meal every night. I'm like on call 24-7. Um, yes, I do have to give up some of my social life, but it's this is my job. I love my job. My son is Roger and he has uh, atrophy of the cerebellum and spinal cord. As a result of that, he's losing control over his walking ability and all coordination is affected by it. I'm a live-in support staff and my job mainly is to help Roger in his daily activities, his basic necessities. Sometimes we go out to dinner and he'll make his own choice in what he does eat. Right now he's on an 1800 calorie diet. We work together and it's, it's not so serious as work. I wouldn't call it work because we have um, a companionship and we do uh, laugh together. This is important work and it's, it's certainly not for everyone. If, uh, if someone uh, does not have a great deal of patience, if someone treats the job lightly, it's probably not the kind of work they'd want to do. Paul, he's uh, subject to seizures. He wears a helmet because of his balance. He has a very poor balance. Paul can be aggressive. There are times he will not be cooperative. So it, it requires a lot of tolerance and patience, especially when he starts to hit you because he will knock your block off. So it's, it, it's being aware of what his disabilities are, but also you have to be cautious of your own personal safety. Dealing with challenging behaviors is just a part of the job. When people get frustrated and they don't know what other way to express themselves, it might be screaming, it might be throwing something, it might be biting you, it might be just you sitting there talking to them, trying to help them calm down, but they're hitting you in the process. Sometimes it's because of communication deficits. It could be either get your attention or they're in distress. Sometimes they do it because they're not feeling well and you don't know that because they don't know how to relay it to you. It will definitely test you on a daily basis. And I'm tested every day. When you're passing medications, um, you know, some of them are fairly serious medications, you know, psychotropics and things like that. That's kind of intimidating because they're controlled substances. The hardest part for me is um, cleaning the guys when they're really uh, covered with feces. I mean, that, that is the hardest part. You know, I, cleaning my kids, my, my kids, my grandkids is one thing. But when you're dealing with someone who is not family, it's very difficult. I live in Lawrence with my fiance, Damien, and we have quite a bit of problem getting care tenants for both of us, so that's a real problem. I'm the one in control. I hire, I fire, I make sure I get qualified people. If they're not showing up, we give them a warning, and then if after that warning they still haven't come, we give them like a week's probation, and then after that we say that 
if I try to give them a week to shape up. Sometimes it doesn't always work. Sometimes the isolation gets to be kind of strange that you have nobody to bounce things off of and you have to make a lot of judgment calls right there on the spot. A lot of places you do have people, a supervisor that you can talk to, but a lot of times these things you have to do on your own. I work with a number of folks that as they've aged, they've developed other health-related issues, Alzheimer's being one. It is hard to see deteriorations. For new people that I know that have never done this and they've come in, and I've seen staff come and go, you've got to be willing to jump in and do it. If you see that it needs to be done, don't expect somebody else to do it. It's everybody's responsibility. And it's done in, in a humane way. You know, how do you want people to talk to you?